So here we are back with uh, acid base equilibrium part two. We just finished our pH calculation of a weak acid. So you had the concentration of your weak acid as 1.75 times 10 to the minus third molar. And that led you to the pH of 3.16. Now we're going to continue on to polyprotic acids. So polyprotic acids are acids that have more than one proton. Remember, a hydrogen ion is a proton. H plus equals proton. Um, each proton on your polyatomic acid has its own Ka value or own acid dissociation constant associated with it. Because when you have a weak acid, like if you have ascorbic acid, um, which is a citrusy acid, then you have uh, a bunch of for each hydrogen ion dissociates has a different constant associated with it. Note that the Ka1 is always greater, much greater than the Ka2, because it's much easier to remove the first hydrogen ion than it is to remove the second and the third and the fourth and so on and so forth. Um, weak bases, just like weak acids, only partially ionize in water. And so you have your general equation where you have your base uh, plus water. So you have to have water involved in that because the water is the thing that accepts uh, or that donates the hydrogen ions so that you have a BH, your base, with an extra hydrogen on it uh, because it accepted the hydrogen ion. And then you have your hydroxide ion that makes that increases the hydroxide ion concentration, which satisfies Arrhenius's definition of a base. And so since this is in uh, equilibrium, because we're dealing with acid-base equilibrium, you have an, a base dissociation constant associated with it. This is the general formula for your base dissociation constant. So you'll have the concentration of your conjugate acid, concentration of hydroxide as your numerator, and then the original concentration of your base as the uh, denominator. Notice that water is not included because water is a liquid. Um, this is just a liquid, and so it's not included in your um, equilibrium concentration calculation. Um, so the larger the equilibrium value, the farther the equilibrium uh, lies to the right, meaning that the more base is formed. So that makes it a stronger base. There's two major types of weak bases. They are amines. Amines contain uh, a nitrogen with bonded to a carbon because nitrogen has um, always has a lone pair of electrons on it that can accept a hydrogen ion. And then you have conjugate bases of weak acids. So if you have a weak acid, then it donates this hydrogen ion and that becomes then a conjugate base, right? So those are the two major types of weak bases that you will uh, come in contact with. Amines are uh, organic bases. Um, and then you have, of course, the conjugate bases of weak acids. Here's some examples. So ammonia is, is, you know, our greatest example. We love to use ammonia as an example because in NH3, uh, it's conjugate base. Then you added a hydrogen ion, it's conjugate acid. I'm sorry, conjugate acid for ammonia is NH4+. And so your equilibrium reaction, you have your base plus water, gives you your conjugate acid plus the hydroxide. Right. The Kb value for that is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. Um, that gives you the uh, um, amount of times that this forms um, a base for every, you know, every time you have this, this reaction occurring. Um, as you look down here, you have different forms of, uh, of the uh, bases. Notice the, the table's a little skewed. So this is your Lewis structure for ammonia. And then pyridine goes down here. Hydroxylamine goes down here. Methylamine right here. Hydrogen sulfide. And then carbonate. And then hypochlorite becomes equal. Um, so this hypochlorite, this is an important one because this is bleach, right? Bleach is a base, but it is a very weak base. Notice that its Kb value is very similar is slightly higher than the KW value, right, uh, for a single, um, for hydrogen in water. So let's do a sample problem. So let's determine the pH of a 0.018 molar solution of methylamine, 
Methylamine is a simple um, organic base. And so you have your ammonia group here, your NH2, it bonded to a CH3. And so there's a lone pair of electrons here on your nitrogen, and then the hydrogen can bond to that, gives you ammonium, methyl, methyl ammonium, plus your OH minus. Notice they have the, the plus sign here. Really, the plus sign should be on the nitrogen because that's the part that got the, the positive part from it. <clears throat> so we have a 0.018 molar solution. What is the pH? Let's figure it out. So you set up your equilibrium table. You have your ice box right here. You have your concentration of methylamine right here is 0.018 molar. You have no conjugate acid and no hydroxide before you drop it in water, right? And then you have the change. So the change is going to be minus X molar for the um, methylamine because that's going to go down by some unknown amount. And then this is going to go up by the same amount because your stoichiometric ratio is one to one to one, right? Then at equilibrium, we're going to do math and we have 0.018 minus X and then X and X for your concentrations of your numerators, right? So then you put that into equilibrium expression. You have X squared because that's X times X. So you get X squared divided by your concentration of methylamine at equilibrium, which is 0.018 minus X. And then that equals the KB value, which is 4.4 times 10 to the minus 4. We looked that up on a table, right, to find the, the um, equilibrium expression. And then when you solve for X, I'm not going through the specific calculation for that. Of course, you can do that on your own. Um, you do a little uh, quadratic uh, formula calculation. And if you don't have that, function on your calculator, I definitely suggest you download it because it's going to be very useful for you. Um, and then according to your table, X is the equilibrium concentration of hydroxide, right? So you take the negative log of that and it gives a pOH of 2.58. pH is 14 minus the pOH. And so your pH for the solution is going to be 11.42. Notice that's on the base side of your acid base scale because we have a weak base that we're working with. So it should have a basic pH, right? Makes sense. So if you have a salt, a salt can be a, either an acid or a base. Um, so you would have to look at what your base, it, what your salt is composed of. Uh, in this case, we have pool chlorine, sodium hypochlorite, right? And we're trying to figure out what, um, how many grams of sodium hypochlorite we added to get a pH of 10.5, right? So that's your pH that we're going for. It's a basic pH. So this is clearly um, a base. You notice this is the conjugate base of um, hypochlorous acid. And so that also leads us to believe that this is a base, right? And they tell you, they give you a KB value. KB value tells you that it's a base. So this is our KB value, 3.3 times 10 to the minus seven. And so we can now use this to figure out how many grams of sodium hypochlorite we added in the beginning. So you go in here, here's the basic gist of what I just said, right? All the things that you need, the important things here. Um, sodium hypochlorite is a strong electrolyte. Um, you know that because it has to be an ionic substance because it's made of metals and nonmetals. And then you also know that it's a strong electrolyte because it has sodium as your cation and all alkali metal ions are soluble, right? So the pH, you can get the OH concentration from the pH, right? So your pH is 10.50. You can get the OH concentration from that, right? Because you know you can just un-P on it, right? So if it's P is negative log, then you can un-negative log, and I'll show you how to do that. And then you can icebox it to calculate the concentration of your, of your hypochlorite ion. And then by calculating the concentration of hypochlorite ion, you can know the concentration of your sodium hypochlorite, calculate then based on the molar mass, the mass of your sodium hypochlorite that you started with. So let's look at that. So your pH is, uh, the pOH, I'm sorry, is 14 minus your pH. So your pH is 10.5, so 14 minus 10.5. Your pOH is 3.5. Then 10 to the minus 3.5, that's the opposite of negative log, right? No, negative log is the base 10 log, so you take the opposite of that. 
Your calculator helps you out with that, by the way. You got the second log button on your calculator is 10 to the x, right? So that's the opposite of the log. So then you take 10 to the negative 3.50, that's 3.2 times 10 to the minus 4th. So that is your concentration of hydroxide ion at equilibrium, right? That told you that because you did that calculation. So you don't know how much uh, hypochlorite ion you started with, so that's X. But you know that it was zero hypo hypochlorous acid and zero hydro hydroxide in the beginning, right? And so because you know that the hydroxide ion concentration at equilibrium is 3.2 times 10 to the minus 4th, then you can calculate backwards. So you calculate backwards and you figure out that this is plus 3.2 times 10 to the minus 4th. Because your stoichiometry is 1 to 1 to 1, then they're all going to be the same, right? This is going to be plus 3.2 times 10 to the minus 4th, and this is plus 3.2 times 10 to the minus 4th. This is going to be minus 3.2 times 10 to the minus 4th because it had to be consumed in order to create these products, right? So then you just do math x minus 3.2 times 7 minus 4th, 3.2 times 7 minus 4th, 3.2 times 7 minus 4th, and then you have all your concentrations that you can plug into your KB equation. So your KB equation get, is 3.3 times 7 minus 7th. That was your KB value for this equilibrium system. Is equal to 3.2 times 7 minus 4th, that quantity squared, divided by x over uh, x minus 3.2 times 7 minus 4th. And then you do math, you calculate x out to be 0.31 molar, right? So if you have 0.31 molars, the concentration, your initial concentration of hypochlorite ion, then that's also the concentration of sodium hypochlorite. So 2 liters times 0.31 moles per liter times 74.43 grams per mole, that's sodium plus chlorine plus oxygen off your periodic table, you get 46 grams of sodium hypochlorite that you started with. So 46 grams of sodium hypochlorite gave you this system in two liters of water. So now you can calculate, if you wanted to, you can either calculate the concentration of uh, the pH in your pool or the amount of uh, bleach that you need to put into your pool to change the pH and all that kind of good stuff. Maybe well, um, it's, it's a good time to start opening up the pool and thinking about this. So there's... Uh, a distinct relationship between Ka and Kb. So this is a uh, acid-base uh, conjugate system, right? So here's an acid, a weak acid, and it's conjugate weak base. And so if you look at it, it looks like they're the these systems are opposite of each other. And let me show you how that exactly looks. So if you go to the the Ka and the Kb values, right? So this is your acid it is ammonium. And so its Ka value is going to be calculated by taking the products over the reactants, ammonia times the hydrogen ion concentration over the ammonium concentration. And then your Kb value is going to be calculated by taking the ammonium concentration times the hydroxide concentration divided by your ammonia concentration, right? Remember, we don't include water because it's a liquid in our equilibrium constant calculations. Then if you add them up together, you get H2O go dissociates to H plus and OH minus. Hey, that looks a lot like the KW equation, right? And so this shows you that Ka times Kb is going to be equal to KW. So your um, acid dissociation constant and then its conjugate bases dissociation constant, the product of those two is going to be equal to the equilibrium constant for dissociation of water. So Ka times Kb always equals Kw, which is 10 to the minus 14. And here we have some awesome acid-base pairs. And if you notice, if you multiply them together, their Ka times the Kb, you're going to get 10 to the minus 14. And if you heat on them, if you take the negative log of them, then you add them up, pKa plus pKb equals pKw because of the rule of logs, and that's pretty awesome too. And so acids and bases um, are not just limited to, to things that are H pluses and all that, because you have the ability of the salts then to create um, either an acid or a base situation. I'm going to go into more detail with this with part three, but this is just to give you um, a preview of the coming attractions.